RPOs are a phenomenal way to attack a defense. And in this video, we're going to talk about my favorite ones to use off of wide zone action. Let's dive in. Now we're going to take a look at these concepts from a wide zone perspective, but a lot of these concepts will carry over into other aspects of the run game. But first, we're going to talk about when we want to RPO. So my entire offensive philosophy is we're going to find out where we have a hat for a hat and then we have to figure out how to formation those matchups to get the matchups we want so that we can win that hat for hat matchup. So right here with the blocking surface being the offensive line and the tight end, we have six players on offense and the defense including the front four and then our two linebackers has six defenders in the front. The issue is the defense isn't playing with only six players in the run fit. So the defense is presenting this even box and on the perimeter, the defense is three over two and two over one in terms of defensive backs over receivers. But the defense is going to bring one of those defenders into the run fit with the run action. So what we need to do is figure out which defender that is and that's who we want to RPO. When RPOs first came in vogue, that was the backside linebacker. And that's why I've drawn up this 4-2 because how defenses were fitting the run was we'd have our end coming off the edge and linebackers there filling the C gap, had our three in the B gap, Mike playing the A gap, Nose playing the A gap, the star, Sam, whatever you want to call him, would be fitting the B gap from outside in or the backside end would be stunning across to the B gap with the star playing the outside C gap. Either way, he was involved in the run fit. And some defenses still play this way and a great RPO to attack this defender we're going to have a lion concept, which is double slants. And if that defender comes, then we're just going to throw it to the F right here. Instead of running slants, we can also run hitches. Read being the same for the quarterback. If that star comes, then we're going to throw the hitch to the F. Now, I'm not a fan of RPOing whole concepts. A really popular one is Y stick out of trips on the backside of inside zone. I don't want the quarterback to have to read a progression after deciding not to hand the ball. That's when we're going to get into trouble with linemen downfield. So I think it's a lot simpler and a lot cleaner for the quarterback. I'm looking at one guy, in this case the star. He's either in the run fit and coming to play the run, or he's staying home and covering the pass. Whichever one he does, I'm going to do the opposite. If he's staying home to cover the pass, I'm continuing with the handoff. If he steps forward at all, I'm pulling that ball back and ripping it to the F. If there's any question, we're just going to hand it off. If it's cloudy, we're going to live with the give and play another down. What defenses have done to adjust now is they have taken the star completely out of the run fit. So now the quarterback, he's looking at the star, right? That's his read. The star staying home, but then we're still running into a box that has an unblocked defender because we're not reading the right guy. And so what defenses have done is they call it slinging their fits. Now the linebackers, instead of playing a 10 and a 50 here, a lot of times they're playing 30s or we're in the tight front and these RPOs are gonna fit up very similarly. And now it's the free safety coming from depth to play the C gap or the end's gonna pinch into the C gap and the free safety's playing the D gap. Either way, he is now the extra fitter. And that stands to reason with the rise of split field coverages. So now what we have to do is have a way to attack the free safety in the run game. And my favorite way to do that is the front side glance. So now if we go back to my hat for hat theory, we have six for six, we have one on one, and the free safety is either going to play two over one, or he's gonna be the extra fitter in the run game. He's gonna choose where he's gonna be extra, and we're gonna put the ball in the other place. Let's dive into this theory a little bit more from the tight front. I think it makes the coverages a little bit cleaner. To make sure we're on the same page about run fits, remember we're running wide zone to the right right here. The ends are going to play the B gaps. The nose is going to lag and play the backside A gap. We're just talking base tight front right here. No stunts, nothing, just day one install. The wheel can do really one of two things. He can be primarily a C gap player and try and spill everything and get the free safety running the alley outside of that or you can play the will as a box player and he's going to set the edge and funnel everything back inside 
where the free safety is going to fit the alley in the C-gap. Linebackers are playing what they call stack track and fall back. They're going to try and try and get the C-gap covered with the jack, but if the ball cuts back, he's going to fall back to the A-gap. Same thing with the mic. He's going to play A-gap and fall back to the C-gap to play the quarterback on a pull. So whenever I think specifically about what gap is theirs, I traditionally will put the jack here in the A gap and the mic responsible for the C gap with the free safety fitting that run from depth. Now what tight front defenses do is, and this also works with a three technique in a four down front, is that stack track and fall back. They're trying to cut the zone off with this B gap defensive lineman and then this jack coming back inside in the hole to make the tackle after this tackle has already climbed and the guard is on the three, now there's nobody to account for the jack. So it's not about who's the unblocked defender, it's just the technique is the issue. And in my last video, I talked about wide zone technique and that will fix that issue for you. So again, when we think about gaps specifically, we're gonna have the jack and the A gap and we're going to make the free safety come down from the table to fit the C gap. We have to be able to win the hat for hat matchup, so that's why we have to beat that stack track and fall back technique. Now, why would the free safety even consider coming into the run fit? And the answer is good defenses now are marrying the front and the coverage together. Now, as far as the coverage goes, on the back side, we are gonna get a triangle coverage, any three over two concept. None of these players are in the run fit at all. We don't want to read them because they don't care that it's a run. We're, if we're reading a defender who doesn't care that we're running the ball, then we are wasting resources and reading the wrong guy. We don't want to read defenders who are not part of the run fit. The only way they'd get involved in the run fit is if we had a zone read and pulled the quarterback on it, then the star would be the quarterback player and that's why, because he is sitting in the RPO window. If you think about the RPO, it's the run pass option. The option here would be, let's say we had that line concept called throwing it to the F right here. That essentially makes him the quarterback player by sitting in that window. He would be the quarterback player. And then if it's a cover two concept, the corner would be the pitch player. If it's cover four, a version of that, then the safety would be the pitch player. On the front side, we are going to get straight cover four quads. If you're thinking about Fangio terms, corner is responsible for the vertical of number one free safety responsible for the vertical of number two will playing the flat force defender in general a defense's rule is going to be if the eligible player that you are responsible for going vertical becomes part of the blocking scheme you have to even out that number so that's a really fancy way of saying if the free safety sees the tight end block which he would on a wide zone run, then now the free safety has to become that plus one by joining the run fit. Because if he doesn't, then the defense does not have that plus one to make the tackle if everybody gets blocked up. It's the same idea as a crack or place. If the Z were to come and crack the free safety, then now the corner, having seen the receiver become part of the blocking surface, has to join as well and fit off of that crack or place. So the free safety here has to join the run fit, otherwise we have a hat for hat. So now the free safety is in the run fit, he is leaving the table. We are not hat for hat in the box. Where we are one on one is with our Z and the corner. And my favorite way to attack that is the glance. And this is where scouting is gonna come into play. How can I get my Z or whichever receiver we have there, could be your X, could be your F. How can we put somebody here who can beat this guy? Does the defense have a strong and weak corner? Are they field and boundary corners? Are they left and right? Are they near sideline, far sideline? Do they have to have a corner on their sideline that they can tell the coverage to because he's not gonna get signals? How can I put my best receiver on their worst corner in case that's the one-on-one -on -one matchup I get because I need to be able to win this route if the free safety joins the fit. As far as how we block this up with the offensive line, again, it's wide zone. I would have the tight end solo on the wheel. We would have a double between the tackle and guard up to the jack. We'd have an A call from the nose to the mic, 
and then the tackle would have to scoop out the backside defensive end. So again, we are not blocking the free safety. We can't account for somebody by reading them and have them accounted for in the blocking scheme because then he's accounted for twice and we aren't accounting for somebody else. That's a personal belief of mine. I don't want to read somebody that we are also accounting for in the blocking scheme. So even though we think the free safety is going to be coming into the run fit, we don't want to block him because we have him accounted for with the glance. All right, now let's look at it the other way around and run wide zone to the left. I'm only a fan of a glance to a single receiver side, and let's get into why. So let's say we're gonna run a glance with a number two right here. Maybe we just run the corner off. Thinking about our coverage, again, we've got a three over two concept. Could be cover two, could be cover four, palms, you name it. The strong safety that we would want to read with a glance is not part of the run fit. So who is our defender that we can't block? Our blocking scheme would be end to the mic, nose to the jack, scoop out the end, and we'd be based on the wheel right here. The defense, again, if they're slinging their fits, is going to fit it up with the ends in the B gap, nose in the backside A gap, the mic in the A gap, jack falling back to the C gap, and the wheel setting the backside edge, and the star is going to come, I've seen it called a trigger rule, so the star from the outside, because he is on the outside and the ball is likely to bounce, he has time to get here to where he can still make the play right off tackle. So I've seen his rule, again, called a trigger rule. If he sees a mesh point with the quarterback at all, he's supposed to come screaming off the edge. So with a glance, we're wanting to read a safety, but again, he's not in the run fit because we have two receivers. What's his receiver doing, even if it's palms, if his receiver is the F right here that he's responsible for vertical, well, he's just running vertical, so he's just gonna cover him. So if we're reading the strong safety here, we're still gonna be outmanned when this star comes and fits off the edge. Now, maybe they're running cover two, and the strong safety is playing the deep half, and the star is taking the F vertical, then that's great, but we still wanna read the star because it's all about him. Is he taking the F vertical, or is he gonna come screaming off the edge? He is the one that we have to keep an eye on. So how can we attack the star? Now my favorite to a twin side is going to be screens because they are putting as much space between these two as possible. You know, say we're gonna run a little hitch route, replace route right behind where that star is gonna be. The strong safety can still drive down, hit this guy in the back, now we have an incomplete pass. Compare that with the bubble. Now there's 10, maybe 12 yards between the strong safety and the F. As long as we can get the corner blocked, again, we're only throwing this if the star comes screaming off the edge. So now we have potentially 10 yards to make one guy miss, and then we're off to the races. We can also flip it and run a now screen. Again, reading the star either way, because he's the one that we can't block. Let's go back to our box count. We have six for six. We have two for two. The star is the X factor. He can play three over two on the perimeter. He can play seven for six in the box, but he cannot do both. In my opinion, this is one of the best formations in football, especially in terms of RPOs. Another one of my philosophies is we don't want to block corners. Corners don't want to tackle. If they did want to tackle, they'd play safety. So what we can do from this formation is we can still read the backside linebacker. This is a great way early in a game to identify are they slinging their fits, as in bringing the free safety into the run fit and leaving the star out of it, or are they gonna play old school and bring the star into the run fit, whether it's off the edge against the tight front right here or back in the B gap against a four down front. Either way, still playing on the back side of the run fit. This is a great way to identify that without having to risk that you guessed wrong. So again, we're thinking wide zone here to the four man surface. We would take the will up to the free safety. We don't want to block the corner. If he's going to come set the edge, we're probably just going to cut it up anyway. Then we're taking our end to the jack, nose to the mic, cut off the backside end. And look, we have everybody on the play side blocked that we care to block. So that frees us up now to be able to look at the backside. Again, we've got our lion concept for we can run hitches. 
One concept that I've left out is Dragon, which is Slant Flat. And I'm not a huge fan of using this as an RPO concept because this is a middle field closed feeder. If we're looking at three over two coverage right here, which is what we wanna RPO against because we have that even box by alignment, then this concept is too easy to cover. The star can just sink under the slant, the corner can drive on the flat. Next thing you know, the quarterback's holding the ball, the running back's gone, and he doesn't have anywhere to throw it. So we're gonna stick to our middle open beaters and we can read this backside linebacker because we have everybody on the front side blocked except the corner. And again, we don't care about him anyway. If he wanted to tackle, he wouldn't be playing corner. Lastly, we'll take a look at a couple different, what I would consider exotic RPOs. I consider them exotic because they're not just a simple glance or bubble or smoke screen. What I call this one is dart. Dart in the Shanahan McVay sense is like a one-step slant on the back side of a run. It is an RPO, it's a pre-snap RPO. Uh, and my system is an adaptation of that. But here we are actually going to read the backside inside linebacker. And it's because if they're playing a traditional cover two concept, he is going to be responsible for the vertical of number three. If they wanna play three over two, two are two true wide receivers, and then potentially play two over one to who should be our stud, the X. Now we're one-on-one -on -one with our Y and we can block up the wide zone like this. And now the one person that we can't handle would be the mic. So we can just run the Y basically straight up the seam right behind where that mic would be. If he fits the run, then we're just gonna dump it right over the top to the Y who's gonna split the safeties. Now if the defense is playing tricks or a poach concept where the free safety is gonna key the vertical of number three, we probably still have enough space to where we can get this pass completed. Just something to be careful of. Maybe we wanna run more of a streak than a dart just to give our tight end that much more room between the ball and the free safety. This last one is kind of what I would consider a goal line specialty. Um, it's definitely viable in all areas of the field, but specifically on the goal line is where you see it happen at the higher levels, primarily because of the involvement of the safeties in the run fit and how far down they are in the box. And what we are talking about is the RPO off of isolation action or insert action. I call this dump. So we are reading the jack. You can also do it with the mic, whichever one you want to do. I think I would prefer the mic more off of an inside zone action versus wide zone. So, so far we have yet to read a box defender. This doesn't really break the rules because the alternative is just blocking the jack with the fullback anyway. So we're still accounting one for one on the RPO, whether we're blocking him or whether we're bluffing it and trying to get up the seam. The rest of the play would be blocked up with the tight end, probably matching the wheel out, the tackle hooking the four eye, and the guard is probably gonna end up plowing him out because they're working up to the free safety. Center would hook the nose, guard would be reaching, and they'd be working up to the mic. Backside tackle has to reach the defensive end. If you want to know more about what those terms mean, be sure to click on the screen and watch this next video.